Hi everyone, I'm Lori Ellison from Hudson Valley Bookkeeping. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to create a custom product slash service to link to your customized rental income codes in QuickBooks Online. Please note that we specialize in training for real estate investors. All right, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first video was how to get it set up and paid for and which version to pick. Now we're gonna talk about your chart of accounts only in the income area, your customers and your product and service. So it'll be a little quick video on um, some items regarding that. You're gonna go up to the top right to the gear Okay, so we're going to go to settings, account and settings, and there's some certain things we want to do. So if you click advanced, we're going to go down here to the customer label, and we're going to change that to tenant. Okay, so click save. There's other items in here you'd like to look at. Most real estate um, entities that I deal with are on a cash basis. So you'd want to pick that. And that has to do with, um, talk to your accountant, but if you bill, what you bill is what you report on your tax return, then you would be accrual. But if you only report on your tax return the money you deposited or received, then you'd be cash basis. I turned on the account numbers. I like account numbers. Um, I do not have the credits automatically applying and bill payment. So you'll learn that later on. We've named these tenants and that seems fine. So we'd say done. Let's go back again. I just want to make sure it's saved that. So in your sales um, preferred invoice terms, I would change that to be like a due on receipt. That's usually how it is. It's going to make you custom like invoice numbers. I would leave the rest alone. I've turned off um, credit card and, and payment software through this because it's a demo file. But these are things to look at. You could turn on late fees. I guess somehow. I guess it's in the customer. They used to not have that. Uh, you don't normally use estimates and you could make a um, any type of default. This is if you're going to send the invoices we're going to make, you would add edit it here. And I would turn this off. I would not have automatic invoice reminders on. Okay. So that's enough for that. But those are important things to think of. So you want to make it so it says tenants. I like that. Even though it still says customers, and I just changed it. So let's just check. Now it says tenants. Okay. So now we're going to get into the down and dirty of the QuickBooks and the first things you're going to want to do. The first thing we're going to do in this video is create income codes, and we're going to base this on a three uh, unit property, just for simplicity. You're going to go transactions, chart of accounts. Okay, so in this plan, you get 250 accounts. So we're going to say new. And how I, I do the rental income is I do it by the property address. So we will do a parent account. And then just ignore this. The detail type really doesn't matter. We're going to use my business address here. So we're going to say 40 Railroad Avenue. So that's the parent. We're going to say save and new. And we're going to put three units. So I'm going to go to income. I'm going to click sub. Type in 40. 
I'm going to say unit one, and then I'm going to do 40 railroad. Save and new. Again, I'm going to pick income. We'll call this one unit two. Oops. Click here on the arrow, save and new. And you would just keep going. If you have 20 units, whatever it is. But this is the first thing you're going to want to do is create your parent account and then your all of your units go below that. Okay, that's step one. So I just want to show you right here, here they are. Here's the three pieces to that. Okay, next step. You would keep, create a rental um, product slash service that would link to each one of these units. That's your next piece of setting up your QuickBooks online file. So you're going to go up to the top right to that little nut and bolt gear icon. And you're going to click here to products and services. If you're used to QuickBooks Desktop, we call it an item in QuickBooks Desktop. So now, oh, look at this. This is new. Add an item. So we're going to say unit 140 railroad. Whoops. Keep. Service is fine. And then category. We don't need that. You're going to link it to your unit 140 railroad. So let's just type it and look how it came up. Okay, so, and then we would put in a description unit, and I'll show you how that factors out later. And let's say our, our rate for this unit is $2,000 per month. Okay, I'm going to create new. So now we have one, so we need to do two more. Pick service, unit two, already railroad. We're typing and then unit two came up. And let's say this unit's $2,500. Create new. As the prices changes on your units, you can change the price. We'll say this one's 3,200, oops. Again, you wanna put this to link to unit three. Okay, so now we have three units, all for different prices. So those are our product and services. Next step, tenants. We're gonna create three tenants. Let's say this is a business. So we're gonna have Warner Deli. That's our first. And we're going to actually put in here that their address is Unit 1, 40 Railroad. Using a new keyboard. I would actually right here too, though, put Unit 1. I also like to have their lease expiration date there. Okay, so we have one tenant now. I click this plus sign. And let's see, um, let's say a printer. Oh, 
Let's we'll see, you fill this out again. Click the plus again. So look, we have our three tenants. Now let's create an invoice. And then this th will be the end of this lesson. So the first corner deli, I'm gonna click new. Let's say you're gonna start them for brand new for January of 2024. It's all new too. They've been changing everything around here. Okay. So we're going to make it for January 1st, 2024. The due date would be the same day. Here's where you'd pick your product. And we did the corner deli unit one. And look, it filled in the rate right here. Okay. We didn't have sales tax on. And we do not have customer payments on. And this is also, if we were setting them up to email them, we could put their email in their profile. Okay, click down here, save and close. Okay, so then we're gonna go to unit two, go to, up to new transaction, create invoice. Again, we're gonna, oh, it's defaulted to what we just did. So here we're gonna drop down, we're gonna pick unit two. And now it's already pre-filled in our amount. Okay, save and close. Now we're going to go up to unit three. New invoice. Okay, it's defaulting. So we're going to drop down to our product and service, also called item when you're in desktop. See, and close. Now, why do I do this? I will show you one thing before I end the session. The reason I like the income codes to do that is for this reason. And you could, you would continue invoicing each month, but I'm gonna show you how it works. So we're gonna go to 1124. Let's do it like that. We're gonna switch it to accrual so you can, that's what you built so we can see it. And now look how nice that is. Instead of it just saying rental income and then a total of 7,700, it's broken out by your units. So then as you run it through the year, you will have um, you will have a full rent roll that you could export to Excel right here. So if a bank or real estate investor or a buyer was looking to see your rent roll, we've now built it into your QuickBooks Online file. All right, uh, please uh, post any questions in the um, comments section, or you can also send an email to hello at hvbookkeeping.com. All right, have a great day.